guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a zebra slash Pegasus <laughs> tutorial. So this was a Facebook Live that I did a little while ago. Um, so we've finally got round to getting the video onto YouTube for you guys to have a little watch of. It is still on Facebook as well, should you want to watch the full length version on there. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a ball for the head and we're just going to press in a little nose area. So it's slightly flatter underneath the bottom of the head and then either side of the nose, just above, I'm gonna just press in lightly with my fingers to create some little eye holes. Now I realize the white paste doesn't show overly well on screen for you guys, so apologies about that. And I'm just pressing in a little bit, sort of from the eye socket backwards to give it a bit more cheek. And then we're gonna go with a slightly bigger ball for our body. And we're gonna roll it into a bit of a teardrop, a long teardrop, or more like a carrot shape. So the rounded bit will be the bum and this thin bit will become the neck. It's the same way as we did the giraffes as well, but the neck's not quite as long on this one as it was on the giraffe. So we're gonna bend it up like that. Then we're gonna work on some legs. Now my back two legs are gonna be a little bit bigger than the front two, not by much. So again, kind of carrot shapes to start with. It's just corn flour I'm putting on my hands there for when it gets sticky. I'm just flattening down the ends of each one so it stands up nicely on them don't go super thin otherwise it won't hold the weight of your zebra or pony whatever it is you're going to turn it into so obviously you can adapt this into many different things um, i am working from home today guys and there's quite a bit of background noise so i do apologize i'm just cutting a little slant at the top of each leg and my body will slot into it there now, if you've got plenty of time to let these firm up, you don't need to add a cocktail stick for extra support like I have done. Um, but because I made this in a live video, I didn't have time to let them dry. So just for extra support, we put that skewer in there and then pressed it onto the body. Now with the back legs, I'm just gonna press in a little bit, just higher than halfway up, just at the back of the leg. And then I'm gonna just take a little bit off the tops of these. And then I'm gonna flatten this down, but almost sort of round it as well. This will go against the horse's bum, that section there, and then this little ankle bit will stick out the back. Again, just because of timing on this one, it's not had a chance to firm up at all. I'm gonna put a cocktail stick in there just to hold it in place. So you can do it without the cocktail sticks, guys. Just make sure you've got plenty of drying time for your paste. And this one's modeling paste. I'll put links below to everything that I've used within the video for you as well. So I've also put another cocktail stick in the neck, as you can see. Now, you're probably wondering why this face is almost finished and the <laughs> you've missed the bits where I've um, painted it. It's the one I've just made, guys, is just sat there in the background. And I started painting this one earlier, so we will swap back to that other one, I think. So I'm using an edible black pen to just draw on the eye details, and I've just filled the eyes with white paste. Now, you can put in a black pearl, sugar pearl, instead if you prefer. It depends how simple you want to kind of make it. So I just wanted to show you that, but how we added the ears where we poked two little holes in the head and some kind of teardrop or leaf shapes, little pieces of white, and these are gonna kind of fold slightly in the middle, and then they're just gonna poke into each of those holes once we've added some pink dust into the middle. So it's edible dust on here. I'm just going to stick them in with water. This teardrop is actually for the tail. It's almost like a leaf. End of the tail and a little, little long thin piece to stick it onto. So this is if we're making it more zebra like. If you were going for a pony or a horse, you want to change the shape of the tail a little bit. It's just going to stick onto the bottom at the back. So the nostrils, I just used the wide end of my dressing tool to just poke in some little holes. And then we're gonna put a little line across the center. Or not actually the center, is it? It's a bit lower down than the center of the sort of muzzle area. Push in with something a bit rounded at either side. And then this is how we darkened the nose. So it's just some black food dust. So edible dust, just lightly dusted onto the nose. Just watch how much you get into your brush because it drops on everything if you're not careful. So nose area and just slightly up from the nose a tiny bit, but not by much. And in a very small amount in the eye socket area. And just a tiny bit on the edges of the ears. And then the skewer that I used through the neck just needs to be long enough that it goes through the feet and just comes out the top of the neck a little bit. Again, if you have time, you can let this body and neck dry and then you can glue the head onto it without the stick. 
But like I was saying earlier, because it was a Facebook Live, guys, I needed to do things quickly because stuff didn't have time to dry. And sometimes if it doesn't have time to dry, I have to add extra support in there to stop it all squishing down. So the head's gonna insert onto the top of the neck. You can change the length of the neck depending on if it's too long. You can cut it down. And let's do a little mane. It's like a long carrot shape, kind of flattened down a bit. Just flatten it up a little bit. And then we're gonna put some lines in, or you can cut pieces out as well. Just to give it more of a hair texture. And then we're gonna stick that on the top of the head, like so and just bring it down the back of the neck. Now this one's too long, so I'm just gonna trim it off a bit. And if anybody's wondering about the noise in the background, I do have builders at my house at the moment doing some work. They're often singing and whistling outside, so that would be what you can hear in the background, I think. So I'm just gonna use my edible pen now to draw some uh, zebra stripes on there. You can paint them on with food color and you can dust them on, or you can even stick them on in modeling paste or fondant if you prefer. Go with whichever one you like best. And we're also going to put the stripes on the mane as well. And you can have a look at an image of an actual zebra for where the stripes go. I think I kind of guessed a little bit on mine. Let's just darken the end of the tail a bit. Just deepening the eye sockets. I'm going to roll two ovals of white to put in the eyes. And then we're just colouring in the pupils with that black pen. If you prefer, you could put in an oval of black paste. Just make sure it's squished down nice and flat if you opt for the paste instead. So this one's for my Pegasus one. You can give it little eyelids as well if you want, guys. There's also an aeroplane flying over now as well. Lots of noise in the background today for me. So this one was just to show you another version of the zebra, but to say that, you know, you can adapt it and change it into different things. It doesn't have to be a zebra. We can give it little eyelashes if it's got little eyelids. So this is modeling paste that I'm using for the eyelashes. Just rolled it thin and then just sliced it off a bit of an angle at the outer edge. So if we take a piece that's thin either end and twist it, we can get a little unicorn horn. I've put a hole in the forehead where I want to slot the unicorn horn. And then we're just adding a bit of metallic paint to that. And these are edible uh, metallic paints that I've got here, guys. Again, I'll put links to these. I do sell them all in my online shop but i'll put the links below so i'm using the side of the knife to press in so it's almost leaving like little triangles but this means it makes it look like it's a bit furry on the ends and then we can just about see the hooves without sticking hooves on separately and we'll paint these gold because if it's a unicorn i feel like it should have gold hooves 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 i don't know if i say that right and it's up to you whether you want to do like the same kind of hairstyle as you did on your zebra or if you want more flowing a more flowing mane on it and for this one we're going to make it some little wings so we're going with kind of flattened teardrops just going to put some little lines in them and just pushing down at the ends so it's going to be very basic little wings and then some tiny teardrops they almost look like shells at the moment and then we're going to put three tiny teardrops in the edge of each one that's so that inner corner and let's stick that on there, like so. You can go bigger, but again, time-wise, I didn't have much time for them to set and I wanted them to stay on. The bigger you go, obviously, the more fragile they are, the more difficult they are to get to set in place. The Pegasuses have unicorn horns, I'm not sure, but play around. You can use this same kind of way to make different ponies, horses, a Pegasus, unicorn, a donkey. I hope you've enjoyed the video guys and I'd love to see what you guys have created from this tutorial. Thanks for watching! If you liked the video be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.